Mr. Anini, you're stating the obvious. I'm going to ask Ms. Mrs. Allison now, what do you think? I mean, there is definitely a very sincere lack of confidence in the ability of the APC to be able to push through this restructuring report which it has come up with. How do you think you're going to be selling it to the Nigerian people or the National Assembly that this is really the way to go? I think um, the, the issue of confidence building, it's a process. We have to really, this thing has to really be taken out in terms of more awareness campaigns, talking. They have done that in coming up with the report. It is now for it to really have the political will, which is from the highest level, really in terms of the leadership also of the National Assembly, which is, of course, they, they control, the, the party controls the National Assembly, their members being in sync on this document. Does the to party make sure really to drive... control the National Assembly? And you just talked about political will. From what we've seen, you're talking about political will from the top. Who yes. precisely are you referring I'm to? I'm talking leadership of the party in the National Assembly. The APC is both, um, um, the, both the Senate and Not House. Not from the presidency? No, I, I said from the leadership of the party, for, uh, presidency, is one, the National Assembly, for it to pass. Because you were talking about how would it pass through, mm. you understand? So we're looking at that, getting the National Assembly, which is, of course, a, I would say, also part of the ruling party today, because they are the majority. That is the process of getting, in terms of awareness, they drilling down to people. Because I think the document, the document on its own, is a good thing. I don't think there's anybody who would really look at this document, leave whether it was driven by someone uh, who... Uh, some people would believe or think he said he doesn't believe in restructuring. And that is Malam. I, and Malam never said he doesn't believe in restructuring. If I heard him correctly on this program, what I think he said was that there are three people, there are three um, uh, whatever people that drive restructuring. There are some that are using it for political this. There are some that are, I can't remember, but he said three things. He didn't say there's no need for, or, or he doesn't believe in restructuring. He never said that. But the truth is, it should really be uh, um, have a process to drive it down to get and gain back confidence of people. It's the issue of confidence is not just even in the restructuring. Even in, there are people who today in the Nigerian project have lost confidence a long time ago. So it's something that gradually we start to build and it can be done. Yeah, and well, it's through well, the National Assembly. I, I just want to take a moment, uh, Mr. Mohammed, to pin down on the issues within the document because I think the content is very important. When you, look at, when you look at, for example, the, the move by the APC restructuring uh, report to uh, replace uh, state of origin with state of residence, for example, that's been one major issue that comes up. And the devolution of things like labor matters, you know, labor negotiations from the federal to the state houses of assembly and the state governors. Do you think that these are things that can actually move the country forward? Mr. Anene? Is it, those things are cosmetic amendments. They're cosmetics. Are they? You see, the problem of Nigeria is the problem of structure. And I come from the Southeast. Southeast has five states. Now, with 96 local government, then a state like Kano, 44, Giga, uh, Castina, and, uh, and Cardinal State have 100 local government. And that is the basis of representation in National Assembly. I'm telling you about citizenship. I'm telling you about indigenous. Now, there was Southeast Development Commission that was defeated on the floor of the house because of representation. And you're telling us that the Nigeria is working. And I'm talking about a situation where the minerals are owned by the states and the tax will be paid to the federation and all this agitation for state creation will stop. I'm talking about a situation if you want to practice statism. Like it is, it is practiced in the US. Originalism. Mr. Based Nene. on the regions. Mr. Nene. We don't want to create states. We don't want to go back to regions. We kind of contract with practice. Mr. Nene, may, what you, is you may not you may not you may not be aware. You know, you've mentioned now this issue of the uh, the devolution of say mineral rights, for example, and min mineral resources. I don't know if you've actually gone through it's line by line the APC so community good. report, but one of yes. the things that was actually devolved by uh, Malam Nasir El Rufai and his committee was mineral rights. He's actually saying what you're saying, mm -hmm. that they should go back to the states and they should be able to make an income from back, their minerals. He yes. brought back so if onshore, you, if, offshore. He said if the basis read, of allocation. If you've read the report, oh, if you've read the report. It's not about if. It's about what I'm telling you. It's about what is contained in the document. He said the basis of allocation should be based on offshore, onshore. And if you, took, if you begin to talk about onshore, that alone, that singular onshore offshore dichotomy is We're enough. We're not talking of oil and gas alone. No, We're no, talking no, no, about no. solid minerals. No, 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 no. How much is coming to the federation account through solid minerals? If we tell ourselves the truth, 
How much is Nigeria getting from gold in Nigeria? How much are we getting from uh, lead? How much are we getting from tin? How much are we getting? Nigeria economy is mono economy, run on iron. So if you bring the issue of onshore, offshore, you are going to spike another controversy Ms. by literal states. Ms. Hainene, if you say that labor matters, for example, are cosmetic, you think about the country today. When doctors go on strike, it affects everybody in the federation. Are you saying that th that process, if it wasn't, if it's, if it's devolved to the states and the states can handle it individually, that it would not reduce the impact of some of these paralyzing strikes in the country? See, so the, the minimum wage in Nigeria I'm sorry, Ms. Anene, I'm going to ask I'm you. I'm coming now. Let me, no, let just me a moment. You. I'm going to ask the you to. Wage in Nigeria Ms. Anene, I'm going to ask you to please hold your thoughts. You will respond to him when we come back from this break. Please stay with us. Well, we still have with us Mr. Salisu Mohammed, a member of the APC, and Mr. Emmanuel Anene, a legal practitioner. Just before we went on break, you're about to answer a question that Adjuri posed to you um, on whether or not there will be an impact if this amendment goes through and state assemblies are able to legislate on things like labor. You see, you see if we look at labor, the minimum wage is 18,000 naira. How many states is paying minimum 18,000 naira minimum wage? We have been told that a prisoner, it takes 14,000 naira to feed a prisoner per day. And we're talking about 18,000 naira minimum wage. So these things are not the, the, the issues that bog Nigeria down. If we want to restructure, if we, if we must go through statism, we must have a quality of states. If we, if, if we cannot go through statism, we go through regionalism. And those states will maintain their local autonomy within the regions. And this issue of people coming to Abuja to collect money will stop. There is no issue if once you, you, you um, amend this constitution to suit this way, there is no need for local government to turn on. Interestingly, interestingly, the, when 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 uh, the uh, Malam uh, Nasser El Rufai Committee released a report concerning the labor matters, it was actually on the issue of the minimum wage. The argument they were making is that can you ask uh, state governments, for example, can you ask uh, Kebi State or Abia State? to pay the same minimum wage of a river state when there's this huge discrepancy in what they're able to generate in terms of IGR and in terms of federal mm -hmm. allocation. Mm -hmm. So it, it, that kind of goes along with what they have been saying, is it Those not? Those things are so minute when you compare with the magnitude of problem facing Nigeria. The states can sort out themselves, the local government can sort out themselves. After how much you have been paid there is not of public domain. And the, and, and the work is going on. The, the problem is that we're confronted with a Nigerian that is not working. In Nigeria, as the nation is not working. So uh, and the, the, I'm going to ask you, I mean, sorry, Mr. Anene, sorry to interrupt your thoughts. There. The question now is, what's the way forward? If you doubt very strongly the intention of the APC to be able to push through this restructuring agenda, what do you think is the way out? The way out is to lift 2014 Confab report and articulate executive bid to the National Assembly immediately. Okay. There's yeah. no need for you thank take it on end of Thank you very much. You take it to PDP, you thank come back thank and you, we, thank we you do very motion much. without movement. Thank you for your thoughts, Mr. Anene. So, Mr. Mohammed, I'm going to ask you, what do you think is the way out? How can your party convince people that it, it does sincerely have the intention to push this through? Well, uh, first and uh, foremost, I think um, we, we, we should na never give up on this country. Because uh, for us to say nothing is working, this has, I don't think so. We are in a process and we're moving forward. We'll continue to move forward and positively. This report is a good report that has been embraced by everybody. It has a process and it is going through that process. Confidence building, awareness, even my good friend here needs just to be convinced to really see the merits of the report, read within the lines. Everything today here he's saying about this report, the 2014, would it make us better as a nation? Yes, it would. Are we going to all collectively come together, embrace it, to ensure that we have one Nigeria that is working, that we will not give up on? Yes. So the best way is, I think, for us to really, through the party, through all the machineries of government, to ensure that this thing is really tinkered down to every nooks and corner, to ensure that it gets the required attention, the belief is brought back, and for it to really start to work. I, I, I really and, uh, want to say that of, and even with the things that have happened before, it should not mean that we should stop trying. Because mm. things happen, we should not stop trying. And, and also, even in the kind of words it, we it's use sometimes. It's a fine think, place to live it. I'm so know. sorry, we've run out of time. Oh, we have to thank you both for coming on Sunrise Daily. Mr. Salisu Mohammed is a member of the APC, and Mr. Emmanuel Anene is a legal practitioner. That's where we leave it on the show this morning. Thank you so much for being a part of it. I'm Maukwe Ogun Yusuf. I'm Ajuri Ngilale. Yes, indeed. I'm Chamberlain Ustar.
What a discussion. I'm Gimbo Omar. Have a splendid day ahead. Goodbye.